Hi everyone, thank you for joining today's session. This is a quick introduction to the ARIA family, which you may know better as the former name, vRealize, and some of the key product components within it. So please note this is not a go-to-market session, it's not a pricing or packaging session, or even a how to sell. This is just a what is it and what does it do introduction, and hopefully that will fill in any missing bits and any gaps that you may be unsure of. So the first question is, why do customers need cloud management? You know, what real added value does cloud management bring? Now, you may recognize this on the screen here from our everything on the truck sessions. This is our software defined infrastructure layer, our software defined data center for both on premises on the left and with our public cloud partners on the right and indeed native public clouds also on the right. And these are the platforms that our customers use to run their business applications. Now, our software defined data center brings lots of benefits and value to customers. It is the central core of most of our multi cloud offerings. But even the smartest software defined products alone are not enough. They need to be run, managed, configured and optimized and monitored for daily operations. And these are just some of the many tasks that customers perform daily to run their operations and infrastructure for their applications and services. Now, typically, customers will use many different tools and products to do each of these tasks across their on-premises and cloud environments. And there's often different tools for each different cloud. Here, we've color coded the tasks as they fall into three broad categories. And those categories are managing costs, optimizing operations and driving efficiencies through automation. You could argue that there's a fourth security operations, and you may see that mentioned in some of our other decks. But most of the day to day stuff that customers do to run and manage their environments, including the security operations, falls into one or more of these three categories. Now, rather than use many different tools and products that often lack integration, it would be nice if there was an integrated suite that could do all of this effectively. And of course, there is our ARIA family. So this is the first takeaway of the session. So if anybody says to me, what does ARIA do? I usually answer, you know, ARIA is a cloud management platform to manage costs, optimize operations, and enable automation across our customers' multi-cloud environments. And that's it. Cost, operations, automation across multi-cloud. Now, it does this using a number of product components within the family, and some which you may have, you know, be familiar with and heard of before. And for today, we're just going to look at a few of the key ones. So for today, these are the five key ARIA products that we'll take a brief look at. And we can see roughly where they sit within those three objectives of cost, operations and automation. And I've also put in, in red below some of the more familiar names, the old vRealize names that you may be uh, more familiar with. So we'll have a look at each of these in turn just a brief one slide per product just to give a quick high level view of what they are and what they do but in particular we'll start with and spend a little bit more time on aria operations as we've previously identified aria operations as being the key product to attach to vSphere this is the one that helps start our customers journey towards a more modern and multi-cloud approach and it's also the product that's used for our cloud management assessments that can be performed by partners. So ARIA operations drives efficiencies in four main areas. So the screenshot here of the landing page shows you those four pillars. Uh, the GUI is, is very well laid out and intuitive to use, and you can quickly get to what you need or what you intend to do. So first off, performance. So you may have heard of Technologies within vSphere, such as vMotion, Distributed Resource Scheduler, don't, don't worry if you haven't. Basically, these are used to move virtual machines between different physical servers. So, for example, if a particular server becomes overutilized and is, is running very hot, vSphere can automatically spread the load across all the different servers within the cluster. So this is reactive. But ARIA operations can predict when this is likely to happen based on historical trends and uses machine learning techniques to make a prediction about when workloads are going to you know, be under contention, be over-resourced. Uh, sorry, the servers are going to be uh, over-utilized. 
So it makes proactive decisions about workload placement and load balancing before they have an impact to the business application or service. Now, this reduces downtime and ensures that the customer has predictable performance across the cluster at all times. So RE operations can also make intelligent recommendations about right sizing workloads and other settings to ensure that the performance is optimized throughout. Next, capacity and cost optimization. So RE operations provides those real-time insights into the capacity status of your environment. But not only that, it can run different what-if scenarios, such as what if I had more hardware? What if I had more workloads? You know, what growth rates am I expecting? And things like that to predict the future impact on the environment. And this allows customers to make better decisions about when, or indeed even if, to buy new hardware. And it can also identify wasted resources that can be reclaimed to free up capacity and save money. And this is a very popular outcome in the uh, cloud management assessments that you run that use this tool to run. It's a quick win to save customers money. Most customers will have some wasted resources in their environment. So this helps to drive down the infrastructure cost per application, and it also reduces the risk to the business from unexpected demanding growth. Third pillar is, I guess, troubleshooting and intelligent remediation. And this is aided by deep visibility from that application into the infrastructure, looking at events, logs, metrics, and configuration data and things like that. So it will detect anomalies within the infrastructure and applications and correlate those alerts and rank them by importance. And it also has uh, integration with ARIA operations for logs, formerly vRealize Log Insight, for deeper log analysis. And there are tools within operations and workflows to help customers provide that root cause analysis. So this accelerates incident resolution and reduces the mean time to recovery of the business application. Finally, compliance. So ARIA operations has built-in vSphere configuration hardening, and it also has compliance templates that conform to PCI, HIPAA, ISO, and other regulations. But of course, customers can build their own. So this helps to ensure governance and mitigates against configuration drift. Any real live environment will have a big challenge with configuration drift. Um, if things do drift away from their intended state, an alert is raised. And you can also configure automated remediations to ensure that your environment remains compliant. And as an aside, many organizations now have sustainability targets. And we mentioned this in our recent partner newsletter. Within operations, you can create dashboards and reports that provide information on CO2 usage and help track against those targets. So at the bottom here, just some of the key benefits of RE operations. The numbers will vary sometimes depending on your different customer and what they're doing, but the benefits are real and this provides high value to our customers. Reducing unplanned downtime, reducing hardware and capacity costs and improving operational efficiencies and reducing troubleshooting and recovery time are all valuable to any business. Now our customers' environments generate masses of log data. And these logs very often contain valuable information. I mean, not only just for troubleshooting, but for optimization and decision-making. So RE operations for logs, formerly known as uh, vRealize Log Insight, collects log data from many different sources and provides a single location for storing and analyzing those logs at scale. So not only does this enable faster troubleshooting, if you remember, we've got the integration with RE operations, but it also gives you valuable insights into the state and health of an environment that can be explored directly or displayed graphically with an easy to understand dashboard, metrics and data. So previously, I've spoken with many service delivery consultants within partners who love uh, vRealize Log Insight as it was, or operations uh, for logs now, as it really helps them to deploy and configure and test and troubleshoot environments. It's a really valuable tool. Now, RE Operations for Networks, which was um, known as vRealize Network Insight or Verney, for those that used it a lot, um, it looks at traffic flows, you know, who's talking to who. So it maps network traffic flows between applications and virtual machines. 
So it looks at who's talking to who and on what connection. Now, this visibility of traffic flow can be leveraged for a number of tasks. For example, troubleshooting and application performance. So it can identify where you've got high latency and network bottlenecks, which can impact an application's performance. And, you know, it's worth noting that subpar performance is as bad as failed hardware. Both result in uh, unplanned downtime or app degradation. But it can also be used for security hardening. So if you understand where the valid active traffic is by uh, identifying what connections are open between VMs that don't need to be open, you can turn those off. Every connection that is open that doesn't need to be is a, is a risk, is a vulnerability or potential vulnerability. So you, these can be turned off, say, using NSX micro segmentation, for example. So this helps to reduce those points of attack from malware and strengthen security. So by making those security recommendations. But thirdly, application discovery and migration planning. So one of the hardest part about migrating applications to different environment, in particular the cloud, is knowing what needs to be moved at a particular time. But if you understand the network traffic and the interact communications, you can make better decisions about which virtual machines and workloads and applications need to be in scope for a particular migration. So if partners have customers who are planning application migrations to the cloud, partners can offer their own services to help accomplish this. And Verney, as it was, our operations for networks is a, is a you know, very valuable and key tool for them to use. So ARIA automation, again, formerly VRA or VRealize automation. This is for customers who are a little bit further or more mature in their cloud journey and strategy and modernization program. So ARIA automation enables customers to accelerate service delivery, i.e. helps you build, run, manage the life cycle of applications and infrastructure much faster using automation. So it uses pre-validated templates, self-service catalogs for developers, as well as automating application pipeline management. And, and it helps you know, customers to build applications in line with DevOps principles. Now, if all this sounds a little bit too techy, the takeaway here is that if a customer has any repeated process or workflow, which can include building virtual machines and applications, ARIA automation can automate it. Automation not only speeds up the process, it removes risk and errors associated with manual tasks. So again, providing a faster time to value with reduced risk to the business. Uh, you know, a very powerful solution. As stated at the top, Cloud Health, or ARIA cost powered by Cloud Health, simplifies financial operations and management across a multi-cloud environment, including native public clouds. So we all know that costs can quickly spiral out of control in a public cloud if there's no governance in place around how you're using it, who's got access to things like that, especially in today's click and consume world. So ARIA cost powered by Cloud Health provides that comprehensive view into the entire environment. So you can understand or customers can understand how things are being utilized, how much they cost, and where, more importantly, where those costs can be reduced. So customers can view usage and costs by a particular project or a line of business or by an individual cost center, whatever makes sense to their business. And this enables them to charge back or just simply track and show back those costs to the relevant organizational group. So the deep visibility also enables organizations to see which resources are underutilized so they can be modified or removed to reduce waste and costs. And again, this is a very old story, right? From the days of physical servers in the pre-virtualization days, right through to today with all the modern applications that we have. Customers will have a lot of wasted resources and cloud health and indeed RE operations can help quickly identify those and provide a quick return on investment. And again, it's not just about costs. As we've seen, configuration drift is a real issue in any live environment and configuration drift adds risk to the business. So Cloud Health uses policies to alert customers when things deviate from their intended state. 
and it can even take automated actions to remediate the problem. You've probably seen something like this before, but again, just kept in for reference, looking at some of the old names and looking at some of the new names. And finally, I was, I was wondering whether to keep this in or not, but I've decided to keep it in. So this is not a formal document, but it is a useful quick cheat sheet of some of the ARIA family for reference, you know, things that we've covered today. So this is like I say, not a formal document, just a quick cheat sheet for your reference. That's the end of my section. I think we're going to hand over now to Aglika to give us an overview of ARIA Hub and Graph. Hello, everyone. I'm going to talk about ARIA Hub and ARIA Graph. Um, they were both announced together with a rebrand to ARIA, to the ARIA name and VMware, VMware Explore last year. The difference here compared to what Pat talked about with the individual products that got rebranded to ARIA is that ARIA Hub and Graph is actually a new functionality added to our management solutions. So what is ARIA Graph? ARIA Graph is a data store that consumes a lot of data and builds relationships between that data at scale. At the bottom of the slide, we have all of our VMware clouds, as well as the hyperscalers and also our on-premises infrastructure. And in the middle are our ARIA products that Pat just talked about with all of our SaaS services. And all of them are collecting data from, from the different environments below. And every single one of these products is a specialist product in its domain. They're very good at what they do. Um, they have become widely used, but they are still very much domain specific. So if you look at ARIA automation, ARIA operations, ARIA operations for logs, etc., they're domain specific and very rarely an ARIA operations for networks admin um, looks into that, that looks into network flow data will also be using ARIA operations or ARIA automation at the same time. And our strength is that each of these products collects huge amounts of data, but the products as a whole do not share a lot of that data. In the past, we provided some integrations but they were basically just the different products calling each other, but actual data sharing did not exist. So with ARIA Graph, we now collect data from all these products and can start building relationships between that data. So automation, operations, network insight, all of our existing technologies are feeding data into ARIA Graph. ARIA Graph then correlates all of that data makes it common and it makes it usable by the entire stack. And it does this at a massive scale. Graph also gives us a common place that we can consume the federated data. And rather than going into each of the single products for different components, customers now have a single place for all of their infrastructure and applications they can interact with through our new platform, ARIA Hub. And not only that, we can also ingest data from third-party tools to enrich our insights, which, which is what you can see on the right-hand side. And this is also a two-way communication. We can also provide the federated data to the third-party tools as well. The other piece of graph is that now that we're collecting this data and correlating it, Customers can make changes and manipulate that data in the new platform, ARIA Hub. And that gives us the ability now to deliver services on top of this federated infrastructure that we were not able to do before. These services are designed to leverage ARIA Graph to be consumed by ARIA Hub and to benefit from everything we've just explained. So if you look on the left-hand side, guardrails, is all about governance, managing the policies inside the management component. It's specifically designed for native public clouds and helps customers use the right um, kinds of uh, best practices as well as guardrails and, and continuous policy enforce enforcement around cost, performance and security to help streamline onboarding and day two management of 
new cloud environments. The next one, Business Insight, is looking at event-based correlation, applying AI and ML analytics to deliver insights across everything and help us make decisions if we need to make changes in our environment and understanding the impact, not just from an IT perspective, but from a business perspective as well. And migration. Um, you can use so the existing Be Realize products and Cloud Health as they are today to help um, do migrations. It is still much better than doing it manually, but it still uh, requires you to move between products because there is some data that needs to be shared between the products, which is not there today. With ARIA Hub and Graph, you have all of that information in one place and you can do a migration by clicking a next, next, next button in ARIA Hub instead of having to go to individual products. So with this slide, I just wanted to make the distinction between Graph and Hub. Graph is the data store that collects all the data from all the clouds, public and private, and all the tools, ours and, and third party, and builds the relationship between that data. But it sits in the background. Graph is then made available to customers as a capability within ARIA Hub, which is the common platform, the user interface that provides the centralized views and, and the controls to manage the entire multi-cloud environment. And that is why you see on the slides, ARIA Hub powered by ARIA Graph. And finally, just to recap, what is the value of ARIA Graph? Without ARIA Graph, we have lots of data sources and different products that do not talk to each other. And with Graph, we can simplify things bring everything together from VMware tools and third party tools and build relationships between that data, this way helping collaboration between teams and creating end-to-end -end services across multiple disciplines. And with that, thank you for watching the session. <laughs>